So if we remember from the last video, we looked at how to return hello world onto the screen or a string, and also how to create a list. And in this case, it was this one here, apples, oranges, bananas. So a list of basically fruits. And now we'll look at, um, yeah, so actually, if we go back, we go back to hello world. And if we go back now and just recompile it, so we type in recompile and just clear that. And if we do to do's dot hello world, then we see hello world, uh, in, in my case, it's highlighted as green, but it's wrapped around quotation marks. So that's like it returning hello world. But what if we wanted it to print hello world, like print it to the, to, to the command line? Uh, in that case, it's a bit different. So in uh, Python, for example, usually like at the end of a method, you'd have like return something like hello world. And that's essentially what we did with this. But what we want to do is we want to print it. And with Python, for example, you do something like hello world, like so. Um, so what we can do is that Elixir has its own version of it. So with Python, yeah, like I said, print uh, with JavaScript console.log or java system.out.println. Um, with Elixir, we want to do io.puts. And io is basically another module that's built in. It comes with Elixir out of the box. It's really nice. And uh, if you go over to the Elixir documentation, then uh, if you go to uh, hexdocs.pm forward slash Elixir, io.html, and you scroll down, you will find the documentation around puts. And the description is very brief, write item to the given device, similar to, similar to write. Um, and this forward slash, we'll get into that later, but it basically means it takes two parameters. Um, and, it, and yeah, and finally adds a new line at the end. So what it means is just printing something out to the command line. Uh, and by default, it, uh, it uses the device, the device that you're writing your code in as uh, the standard output. Uh, it is the standard output. So in my case, it's this laptop. In your case, it's whatever computer you're writing on. So we can do puts and we can say, hello world. Save that, we go back and yeah, keep this in mind, how it's wrapped around in quotes. Uh, we can just recompile and do to do's dot hello world now. And now we get hello world, but it's not wrapped around any quotes and it's not highlighted in green. And that's because we're literally just printing out to the terminal. We're telling the computer, print this out to the terminal, show the user this message. And that's what puts does. And yeah, like alternatively, we can read from, we can get the user's uh, input. So we can say, instead of puts, we can say gets. And what gets does is basically the complete opposite of puts. It, it asks the users to type something in. So we can say hello world and then just put a space there and I'll show you why. So we can do recompile. And if we do to do's hello world now, uh, it says it's hello world and the space that we entered. And then here, like you can see our cursor and this is waiting for us to say something. So we can say, this is cool, like so. And then it just returns uh, our message as that's what gets does. So we will take in our input and then just return that input. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really that. Like um, we know now how to print something out to the command line and also how to read something. So we can now basically get started with the basics of our like to do app. So to begin with, we want to go ahead and Thing. Yep. Um, let's clear that. Oops. We want to go back to our code and we can remove this as we don't want the hello world uh, function. And we can do something called, we can create a function called create tasks or create to do's. And at the end we say do. So we're saying uh, create a function called create do's, create to do's and then do what's ever inside this, um, this code block. So we can ask for, we can say, 
we want the user to kind of um, like tell us how many to do's they want to create. So we can do gets and then just put enter the number of tasks you want to add for space. And instead of task, I think maybe to do's you want to add. So yeah, whether it be we want to create five to do's or 10 to do's, whatever, um, this is what it will be doing. So we can save that and we can recompile and we can say to do's dot, and we don't have the hello world anymore because we've compiled and we get this error. We can instead do to do's create and you can type it in and you can hit tab and it will auto complete for you. And we just run that and there we get it. Enter the number of to do's you want to add and we can say three. And then we just get this string that's returned to us three and then backslash n. So that backslash n basically meaning new line. But yeah, like it's the, the problem here is that we don't want a string, we want a number coming back to us. Uh, and by default, like uh, the puts uh, or the gets um, function returns a string. Uh, and we want to convert that into an integer. So if we hop back here, we can have a look at like what's there. So we can say, um, let's create something like uh, some variable and uh, use pattern matching. Uh, that's the appropriate name. As mentioned in the last video, pattern matching is the replacement for variable assignment when it comes to um, Elixir. Um, and so we can say like what or 12. And that's a string, so we can see that there. In order to convert that into an integer, there is the integer module, which again comes built in, and we can say integer.pass. And what this does, it takes in a, a value, so we can say like or 12 or we can put a in there, and we get this like curly brackets with two elements in it. Um, but pass basically says, uh, we want to, whatever we get now, we want to convert this into an integer. And there are similar kind of functions like this in other languages. So this might look quite um, f familiar to you. Um, but the, the weird thing is, is that we get this, this curly brackets with 12 and then a comma separated with a comma and then this quotes. So this is what we call a tuple in, um, or tuple in Elixir. And we'll go into more depth of what that is. But what we want to do now is let's say we, this is returning a value. So it's returning a value, which means we can kind of use pattern matching and assign it to some variable. So we can say something like um, uh, the uh, pass return. And we can say integer dot pass. And I click tab to auto complete it, pass an A. And now if we do pass return, we get this value. So what we've gone ahead and set, what we've said is pass dot return. And then we've said 12 and then quotes like that, um, which matches up like, um, but uh, ignore what I said just then with matching up. But uh, we basically said uh, assign this to this but we want, we're only interested in this 12 value or this number. We don't care about this. It's not useful for our application. So there's something, and this is where we'll go into more depth of this pattern matching thing that comes with um, Elixir. We can basically say, um, we can do curly brackets or better still to give like a, an example of this, we can say um, a b equals integer dot pass and then a and now what we've if we type in a we get 12 and b we get the quote marks so what this has gone ahead and done is actually if i go back here and yeah you don't don't type this in this is more of just an example we've got a and then b and we've set this to 12 and quotes so if like in JavaScript, uh, this is quite common. It's known as like um, unpacking. So we're unpacking this and putting it into this, storing it into these variables. But this is pattern matching in uh, Elixir. 
So we're saying match this with this and match these quotes with this one here. So A is now assigned to 12 and B is now assigned to these double quotes. And that's what we've done. Um, and the, the reason why this works fine is because A and B are like just plain like variables and we can reassign them. So A we reassigned as we already assigned that to 12. Um, but now we, we again like reassigned it and we set it to the non-string version of 12 and B has been assigned to these quote marks. So with that in mind, and we'll be doing more of this uh, as we go on, uh, we can now say um, the, let's say number of tasks and the quote, we can say just quotes like this equals Actually, sorry, we can do this. We can say number of tasks equals that. So uh, number of tasks equals whatever we get from this. And you can see here, like I'm getting a yellow, like squiggly line. And that's saying variable number of tasks is unused. Uh, this is like a warning, but it, uh, Elixir will also warn us if we try to recompile now. So let me just clear this. Type in recompile we get this really nice warning, which is saying variable number of tasks is unused. If the variable is not meant to be used, prefix it with an underscore. And by that, it basically means put this underneath it. And there it goes. Like we were not making use of it, but we'll make use of this underscore later on. But now that we have this, we, um, we want to pass that into the, um, the integer, dot pass so you can see it's a built-in module like if you're using vs code and uh, i think the extension allows it if you type in integer it shows up here click dot and then type in dot and you see all the things that come with it type in pass like so and we now we can put number uh, of tasks now let's recompile that and what we're expecting is something like 12, or like what we had before, so 12, and then the quotes, like that. Let's recompile, and let's do todos dot create todos. Enter what we want, so let's do 13, and we get 13, and then a new line. Uh, before we had um, the, uh, like an empty quotes, in this case, like what it's doing is it's separating the number from whatever string it came from. Uh, and new line is basically just white space. So it will regard it as treated like that. Um, but yeah, now we have this. Um, so what we want is the, uh, the number. So we can go ahead and say um, number of tasks, we can reuse that and say, uh, and we also want, like we can separate that with the quote. Quotes are uh, uh, or a reserved word, so we can just say Q and just do equals. And then we can just run return number of tasks. And we get a squiggly line, variable Q is unused. We don't really care about this part, like this new line. So we can put, and it suggests if the variable is not meant to be used, prefix it with underscore. So we can just say underscore and that will just shut up that complaint. Uh, so if we go back, recompile, oops, just clear it and then do to do's, create to do's, let's say four. And now we just get four because what we've done is we've uh, asked for the number of tasks we get back, we type in a number, so in our case it was four, uh, and that's still a string. And then we wanna pass it as an integer, so we get back the number and like the rest of it, like the quote, um, and then we just say number of tasks, and as um, at the last line of a function in Elixir, just it's just the return value, uh, we get back four. But the, this whole thing looks a bit messy. And now we'll go ahead and look at how we can tidy this up and make use of something known as the pipe operator, which is uh, something that comes with Elixir. But yeah, that really concludes this video. So we've looked at how to um, like print something out to the terminal and also read 
uh, a value along with passing it, making use of uh, like looking more into pattern matching and um, yeah, that's and passing a string into uh, passing a string. So turning that string into an integer. If this didn't have an integer, say if we typed in like hello world, like we'd get an error back. We can actually have a look. We can do uh, integer dot pass hello world. And we get an error. So this is, again, like this looks a bit weird because this colon that's known as an atom. And we'll talk about that later, but um, it doesn't work. Like we don't get um, our, uh, and there's no number that we put in here, so um, that didn't work out. But yeah, that's really it. That's this video concluded. And in the next one, we'll look at the pipe operator and how to tidy this up using that.